Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today is January 10th, 2024, and we're here with Oops All Business because all the stories are weird this week because we live streamed and also it's the new year. But you can get excited for this one because we all desperately need this in our lives because honestly, sometimes I'm sitting there and I'm like, I want to talk to the AI, but it's just so many Mm. clicks. How can I skip all of that? Microsoft's adding a new key to PC keyboards for the first time in 1994. I know. It's not a teabag key. I, I like, uh, it's, a, it's a, the co-pilot key, which is sad. Yeah, we sell at store.level1text.com. You can get a teabag key. Um, it's the menu key. They're just changing the label on the menu key that's always been there because nobody clicks the menu key because the menu key doesn't do anything useful. The whole reason the Windows key is a thing is because you could use it for built-in OS shortcuts because before that every different program could use control and alt and control alt shift its own way but you know Microsoft they don't they, they have no idea how keyboard shortcuts are supposed to work they don't work reliably um, and they're also insane see also like when control shift L was it when control shift L that brings you up brings up LinkedIn there's a keyboard shortcut built into Windows to open the LinkedIn website because It's going to be. You need to be on LinkedIn all the time. It's going to be one of those things where if you're watching a video or playing a game or something, you're going to accidentally hit it, and it's going to be annoying. Like the Windows key. <laughs> uh, and we can all complain about that using our new space phones. Ah. Starlink launches the first cell phone towers in space for use with LTE phones. I think they already sent the first test text message. T-Mobile field test begins soon. Texting will be available before voice and data. What a world. And we have some new TVs, those TVs that are shockingly cheap because they're spying on you. Well, they're also going to get a little bit better, but in a cheaty kind of way. (laughs) LG's 2024 OLED TVs put a bigger focus on AI processing than ever before. So you feed it a crappy signal and it's going to try to make it better through AI. It's going to try to do AI upscaling. Motion smoothing, even more emotiony smoothing than ever before. In other words, this will be something that you need to turn off when you buy a TV. <laughs> it's weird. Yet another thing. It's weird, though, because these, these OLED TVs are still, you know, a lot cheaper than the $3,500 LG computer monitor. And the LG computer monitor doesn't have any of these AI features. And yet, this has hmm. all kinds of AI features, and it's not a computer monitor. They haven't bothered to add DisplayPort to these panels. That seems weird. Why would that be? Well, the... Computer monitor team is hard at work, though, adding features that the human eye probably cannot discern. CES of 2024, LG develops an OLED monitor that can hit 480 hertz refresh rate. It's not 4K, which is a crime against humanity. It's 1440p. I think most competitive gamers play at lower resolutions, though, right? Yeah. Because it would be detrimental. Yeah. Well, you don't care about graphics. You just need speed. Yeah, and plus bigger targets, right? Because you want the smaller resolution. Uh, we're we're uh, you're you're rocking OLED now too, right? I I also use OLED and it, OLED yeah. is glorious. It is, uh, you know, I was like not buying into the hype for a long time, but it is pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> what a ringing endorsement! <laughs> and Apple, they uh, did not have the best year in 2023, and honestly, there's really not much to look forward to, is there? We will get their uh, VR headset, I guess, but. That's probably not going to be niche. burning down the house. I'm looking forward to the the uh, the news about, around things that happen with the lovers' quarrel between Goldman Sachs and Apple. I'm going to delight in oh, those yeah. reports. They also loaned a lot of money to a lot of people <laughs> that probably shouldn't have money loaned to them. Well, they're going to walk away from that, though. This, yeah. this was not part of that. Apple shares fall 4% after Barclays downgrade. Well, why did they downgrade it? Because people aren't buying phones and iPads. This is the first year that Apple read the room and said, let's not release an iPad this year. Oh, we have a story, you're, yeah. You're jumping oh. ahead. <laughs> Apple just broke a tradition it had held for 12 years. Let's do an iPad every year. Uh, part of the reason is, they read the room, part of the reason is if you actually look at the M3, it's not dramatic. Like the M1, okay, yes, it's architecture change. It's amazing, blah, blah, blah. But M3 doesn't make sense in an iPad because it's not that much better than an M2, especially at very low power. They also mentioned like people just don't upgrade, which... Can confirm, have not upgraded mine, have not felt the need to. But also that 
the iPad OS is too garbage to take advantage of these new chips. So what's the point? I still have, I think, there's a one of the iPads at the office just stopped getting OS updates. And it's otherwise perfectly reasonable, and I feel like that, that is planned obsolescence because it's not that old. Yeah, and clearly, internally, the Apple employees are seeing and feeling what everybody else is now noticing, and maybe they did long before now, because the rats might be leaving the ship. Apple's iPhone design chief headed to Love From to work with Johnny Ive on AI devices. So maybe we'll get a good version of the uh, the AI communicator thing that had the slow response time and is probably not very good. Nothing he ever designed was good. <laughs> he took all the ports off. Uh-huh. There's that. Woo-hoo. Oh, great. great. No connectivity and long press. Thanks, John. No, there was a time when like his design influence was everywhere. Back yeah, in it the was Tumblr a, days. And it ruined everything. It made everything flat and gradients and it was like a big thing. <sighs> I don't want it and I also don't want this, but I do kind of appreciate that it exists because <laughs> it's just so uh man made horrors behind your comprehension. I don't really want this to be part of my lifestyle, right? Like when I see people with Harley Davidson stickers covering their entire back window, I'm like, you realize you're just advertising, right? But Ray's Hell in Rivendell, totally okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you want to tell the world that I love the Microsoft Corporation, there might not be a better way than to serve them a breakfast with this. You can now buy the Xbox Series S toaster for $40. If you want four slots at a time, you're going to have to buy four. Yeah, one. Oh, yeah. Who's that for? That's people for the, who don't have a gaming appetite because they've been drinking Red Bull all night. Yeah, it's for the neats yeah. who are just making one toast as they... They drag themselves away from the game long enough to make one toast. Like the anime opening where they put the toast in their mouth and they run to class because they've been playing games all night. Except they're not going to class. Uh. Now we've heard a lot about Tesla and its trials in Europe and how they are not taking out their trash, not delivering their mail, not registering the new cars, not unloading the cars on the docks. Icons. And yet somehow... Tesla extends its lead in Norway sales. EVs take 82% market share. How is this possible? I thought it was cold in Norway. What's going on? Are you from Norway? Explain it to us. We actually had some commenters from Norway. And and they said, like, yeah, our roads are good enough. And, like, you know, you might not be driving a ton. So. And and the cold didn't affect them that much. I mean, that might just be Tesla bots. Hmm. But (laughs) who knows? They're buying them. But the EVs, other than Tesla, amazingly, still seem to be terrible in a variety of ways. It seems that Elon Musk, for all his failures, did figure something out that all the other automakers could not. Technical headaches put the brakes on GM's big EV push. Uh, GM sold a record number of EVs, but uh, they've, they've had some problems with their batteries. Again. And it doesn't seem to be getting better. Did you see the video from china of the ev exploding and like lifting off it got up to i think they said four meters <laughs> there's a video of it it's amazing that is a pretty catastrophic battery failure <laughs> it was on a charging station at the time that's oh. amazing did it pull the charging station uh, yeah. well you can't see it's just a cloud of yeah fire and smoke and the <laughs> this is a we desperately needed stories this week, so this one's in here. Yeah, but the modern cars, they are more expensive than ever, but they seem more garbage than ever as well. It seems like they're focusing so much on smartphone on wheels that they're not focusing on car first. Mm-hmm. Car first mentality is what we need. Father says his daughter's car is melting in the driveway. Honda says it's not covered by the warranty. It's not really so much the car as the paint. From what I gathered, at well, least in the video. It was also the uh, mirrors, I think, were melting. Oh. Yeah. Now, they responded. Honda responded and said, yeah, cars, sunlight damages things. That's true of all things. Deal with it. But don't they... I mean, that's true, but also, like, don't they do UV protection for most paints? Like, are they just skimping on that now because it's too expensive? It's long established that focused sunlight can heat surfaces and cause damage. I don't know what's focusing this sunlight. She actually parks under a giant magnifying glass every (laughs) night. 
But they're not going to do anything about it. As someone who's always had cars that had bubbling paint and stuff, I don't really think too much of it. Maybe I'm... Well, your cars were like 15 years old. Yeah, they were ancient. This was brand new. Yeah. So... (laughs) <laughs> the muffler didn't work and the windows sometimes would get stuck so I had to put a trash bag in. <laughs> All right, now blow the whistle. Because <laughs> we thought this hype train was but like oh. off the tracks decommissioned, but no. <laughs> it's back. It still has life left. Someone has been fueling the boiler. Wendell <laughs> threw this in like last second. He's like, everybody shut up. <laughs> There's news. There's a lot of caveats here. It's back. Researchers say they've replicated the LK99 room temperature superconductor experiment. (gasps) There's hope. So you're saying there's a chance. But there's like six things where it's like, well, it didn't do this, and it didn't do this, and it didn't do this. And it's not at room temperature. It's at ice cream freezer temperatures, and it's very, very small particles, and there's a lot of asterisks on that. But again, the computer simulations... Are plausible. It's possible if you could, if you can, if you can, if you can do the sort of the Drexlerian, you know, nano manipulation, the nanoscale machinery, and construct these one molecule at a time. Maybe theoretically, the computer simulations show and that it could superconduct. And then you sacrifice a goat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that with all the other battery technology, and along with this, is probably <laughs> not something to get hopped about. Ultra high mobility semiconducting uh, epitaxial graphene on silicon carbide. So these are single sheets of graphene, but they're doing two sheets at a time. This might be our post silicon future. Like this might be the first foot wedged in the door with some broken toes of replacing silicon, or at least some of it. It's a very similar lithography process, and it produces something that could be used as the basis of a semiconductor in the future. Um, without a lot of headache, and this material has better electron. Uh, it's better. Its properties for use in semiconductors and circuits is much better than silicon already out the gate, even in this very early process. And there's lots and lots of peer review in this paper, unlike the superconductor paper. So I hold out more hope for that one. You know what's going to happen is like this is going to develop slowly, and then three, four years from now, when AI is ready to take over. It's going to be like, oh, I can finish that. <laughs> and then it'll just, it'll already have the factories under its control. And then that will be the AI revolution. The AI will be like, oh, it turns out that, a, that an HP DeskJet 550 from 1990 is the perfect mechanism for synthesizing this. And it's just like, oh, okay. And then what we think we have protection from the aliens or the AI because it can't like leave the factory or whatever. But it's like, oh, I got superconductors now. <laughs> My batteries are real good. <laughs> And uh, Substack is one of the few places left on the internet where people can post things that are not acceptable to the narrative. And boy, do some people hate that. (laughs) Substack faces user revolt over anti-censorship stance because of neo-Nazis, at least according to the Guardian headline. Demonetized. Yeah, which is true, I think. They do have some people who are literally like unapologetic about it and are like, yeah, subscribe to my Substack and let me tell you about these things. But if you know anything about free speech, that's the definition of it. That's the measurement. Seems like we will lose that eventually, though. And if you are still in 2024 insisting that crypto is the way, how many more headlines do you need? Here's one more. Chief executive of Collapse Crypto Fund Hyperverse does not appear to exist. Chief executive Stephen Reese Lewis, pictures, video... Name, credentials, especially credentials, not real. Someone went, checked all of his uh, claimed education and previous work experience. None of it's real. The original CEO was replaced by this guy when things got a little iffy. And it seems like he's just completely fabricated. Amazing. This was a lot of money and no one checked. It's the future. Imagine having that kind of money where you can just be like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Who cares? Not me. Well, I don't think a lot of crypto bros had that much money. They were just like, take everything I have. Give me gains, please. There is something that we've talked a lot about. And I have to admit, I don't 
follow my own advice here because it is so annoying. <laughs> but we should be doing this because it's the only way that we can maintain the things that we love. Oppenheimer and how the resurgence of Blu-ray and DVDs, how to stop your films and music from disappearing. I will say we do this for movies. We, we make sure we have a copy of all of our movies, but I don't do it very well with music because I listen to so many different artists. It'd be hard to get all their albums. I really don't watch movies over and over, though. I do. I have, like, comfort media. Now, there's another way to do this, <laughs> but we won't discuss it. <laughs> it's frowned upon, but it's so good. If you are someone who loves to have end-to-end encrypted communication that is still probably being spied upon, but maybe it's a little bit better, there's a sad news for you. Wicker is dead, according to 404 Media. Uh, we're having problems connecting to the Wicker Me network. Uh, it's not coming back. This was the Amazon version of that. They do still have government contracts, so there might be that version that still persists. I think the military actually uses this. But you plebs will not. It was end-to-end in, end encrypted messaging from just is all it was. It was really just a proof of concept demo for Amazon services. And if you're a gamer, I feel bad for you if you are colorblind, because for years you've suffered and there's been no recourse. But lately, games have been a little more inclusive for that type of thing. They're trying new things, and somehow they're still being criticized <laughs> for not doing it perfectly. One of Tekken's, a Tekken 8's colorblind modes is causing migraines of vertigo and debate. This is not the only colorblind mode. If you were colorblind and this was your only option, I could see complaining. But they're just like, hey, let's try a bunch of experimental things and see see what it does. I think this is fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's give you a lot of options. If you don't like them, don't use them. But they're there. Why are you being criticized for this? Again, I think it's because, as we've discovered, agonizingly slow news week. Yeah. We need to find something to complain about. But here is a celebration of human achievement oh. that is just astonishing. Have you guys seen the video of this? No, it's all downhill from here, though. The <laughs> the game crashed. The like the time between when the thing appears and when it falls is imperceptible. The only way he could do this is with a new technique called rolling, where they hold they have a gloved hand and they hold the controller and then they like roll their fingers over the buttons. So they can go fast. Because if you're just using your thumbs, you could never do this. Tetris has finally been beaten after 34 years. He made it to, what was it, level EA or something? It's like level 154. There's a ton of things that go wrong when you get up into those levels, too. One of the worst is... Look at this kid. These pieces, the pieces start to become all black. So you literally can't see. (laughs) I spent a lot of time, like me and my aunt, we had little handheld Tetris things. They weren't full color or anything. And we played it a lot for a while, like a ton. I had Tetris on the original black and white Game Boy. Yeah, it was. Uh, this dude is, <laughs> you know, I mean, he's, he's obviously enjoying I think he's fame. what, 13? 13 years old, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, one person on, I think one of the news websites or maybe on social media said that he needs to touch grass. And people were like, how dare you? Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't like Tetris? Who doesn't want to see a 13-year-old win at Tetris? But not just Tetris. This is like something only an AI could do up until this point. Uh, do you feel like, do you think he's going to be looking back on this? Like one time I threw a football clear over the mountains. Like this is the peak of his achievement. At 13, that's tough. That is. Yeah. It's, you think like at 21, he's in a bar talking up a girl. He's yeah. like, hey, do you know that? It, it took Macaulay Culkin a long time to recover from that. That's true. Yeah, he went to a dark place. I hope this kid doesn't follow in his footsteps. What if he gets really good at some other game? (laughs) Well, it won't be this one, unfortunately, because this one is going away. He should immediately go to... Oh, Kim Kardashian's once massive mobile game is no more. Although he, this the kid could go to Twitch and you know start streaming. And yeah, like, speed runs or something. Yeah, I think he speed, prob- speed running influencer and he'd be good to go. I think he was right. Mm. Now he is. Yeah, because it was That's all on video. That's technically against the yeah. terms of service. Because <laughs> he's thirteen. Running? No, he's young. Isn't it oh. like 13 or older? Is it? I don't actually Well, know. he's 13, so. Parental yeah. consent, I guess. Anyway, this is sad if you played this. I don't know any. I don't know anybody who did, and yet I was aware of it. Yeah, well, we covered it originally, but yeah, they, they I think some, it was popular. Some numbers here. It was insane. And it's been running for 10 years. 
It doesn't feel like we've been under the yoke of these people for 10 years. But I guess <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, uh, at least with the art style and stuff, I assume it's like dolls. Does anyone remember? That's the, might was, be a very niche thing to remember nah, was, from the early internet where you had like paper dolls you could dress up. I don't know if that, like, what the art style was, but the idea was you start out as like a nobody in Hollywood and you have to whore yourself, I guess, yeah. <laughs> to get to the That's basically what, yeah. <laughs> Not basically, literally. Well, she was Paris Hilton's assistant, the one sister. I guess she's the oldest. The most popular one. Kim is not the most popular? No, I said I think Kim is, but she was an assistant to Paris Hilton. Uh, most she was also like born into Hollywood royalty and all that business. Yeah. And Twitch, man, Twitch just can't figure out <laughs> what they want here. They can't keep everybody happy, so they just change it from week to week. <laughs> uh, Twitch bans implied nudity among streamers. And I, you know, I don't know. I don't know if those are... Cleavage is okay, but not underbust. How do they feel about side boob? Did they have a paragraph describing that? So I think actually Wendell was talking about this last time we talked about the Twitch thing was the black bars. Yeah. Maybe you were talking about it. Uh, They don't want the black bars. So even if you're wearing clothing under the black bars, because the black bars... We're getting a lot of emails. ...imply nudity, then it's not okay. Yeah. And the, the under boob, I guess, is like... Because you can see the under boob, you can see the top cleavage in clothing, but you can only see the under boob if you're implying nudity. Mm. So it's not okay. It's, it makes no sense. The more you try to like define it, the more ridiculous it gets. And it's like, just make a category. Well, they did make a category. And yeah, and then they walked it back. So it's just confusing. They say that people get angry when they're on the homepage and they see the black bars, but like, how sensitive are you? gonna have to put the gopro on a screwdriver and just be like this is your your pov computer build uh, how does that satisfy and <laughs> just put black bars over parts of the pc <laughs> yeah <laughs> just like oh this is you know the naked computer the, the naked processor socket well you have to ask the question every year right will this be the year of the linux desktop and the answer is emphatically no. <laughs> <laughs> Linux hits nearly 4% desktop user share on stack counter. All right, look, if this is not going to be the year of the Linux desktop, could I talk you into this? Just embrace Linux for the desktop to make the line go up enough to make Microsoft nervous, and then maybe Windows 11 wouldn't be such trash. Yeah, we'll get that right after we get a third-party presidential candidate <laughs> in the White House. If uh, if Windows goes through with a ton of ads and stuff, I could see people looking for alternatives. But Well, we do have the 2025 end of Windows 10, and that's going to invalidate all the hardware. So it would be a great time, but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that I'll do it, but like, if there were enough ads, I'd probably consider it more seriously. Most people are going to, if they were going to try that, they would get started, and then they would hit five devices not working and they would figure out that like they need to install something they don't know how and then they're gonna be like no i'm done with this microsoft does have a bad habit of of those the sites and the guides that people write that are like here's how you make windows a much better that they tend to break all of the stuff it's like oh we had a million people actually do that to make windows more usable let's break how that script works or let's break those parts of windows or let's make it just ignore your preferences or reset your preferences every time you install an update and you might have gotten some gift cards for the holidays and you're out there using them, enjoying them. But please remember that gift cards are anti-consumer and so is this. Starbucks accused of rigging payments in app for nearly $900 million in gain over five years, according to this consumer watchdog group. Basically, you don't have any way to get your money out of Amazon's, Amazon, out of Starbucks' parallel currency system. And you're never going to be exactly the amount. It's like you can't just. And you can only load $5 at a time. Yeah. So you can't like. It's like, oh, I've got $3. Let me just put a dollar twenty on here. And then I can get whatever coffee that I'm getting today. And then I'll be done with this. No. You have to put another $5. Which puts you in another weird limbo where you're left over. That's what they do with uh, like loot boxes and currency and games too. Now Starbucks responded to this and said, no, you can use that. And then pay for the rest with another payment. But this article says no, so I don't know how to believe you. I, it's been a while since I've had a Starbucks gift card. I'm pretty sure I've just used up a gift card and then but paid with my debit. This is not necessarily a gift card. This is the app where you oh, fund okay. money into it. But they, again, Starbucks claims it works exactly the same. So, 
I don't know. Interesting. Maybe just some of the uh, baristas don't want to deal with that. And they tell people. Tell them no, yeah. Well, no, no, just put five more dollars. We all know that Amazon sells a lot of counterfeit products and a lot of things that really probably shouldn't be sold on Amazon. Maybe some lasers that might be a little too powerful, <laughs> things of that nature. Some things that could be used for horrible things. And I guess to their credit, they're trying to do something about that, but they're doing it in the modern corporation way of just a faceless, soulless, crushing boot that you cannot do anything about if it's used improperly. The Ars Technica story is Amazon Marketplace crackdown has sellers searching for legal help. The cleanup drive has led some small businesses to having their accounts suspended with little recourse. And it's like, what do we do? We, now all of that business is dried up. We can't just sell to our customers anymore through no bad behavior of our own. But because Amazon is a global phenomenon, there's now a cottage industry of lawyers and helpers who are like, oh, Amazon banned you, pay me $2,500 and I'll intervene on your behalf. And we'll still get counterfeit products. It won't fish, uh, fix it. And if you are into uh, collaborative creative design, pour one out. Envision Design Collaboration Services is shutting down. Rip. Don't this. worry. They're not going to shut it down if you've already paid them, but they're going to make it harder to do anything else. Yeah, end of the year is when it goes away. The article makes it sound like they're still going to do something, but... It's not very clear what it is. I don't use this a ton, but I do use it as like... I don't use it for prototyping, but I use it to like... Sometimes I'll upload mockups into it just to demo how it will work in a browser for a client before they approve it. And I'll miss it for that. It's sad. We've, we've noticed too that like when a client previews something in something like this that's in a browser, they don't understand screen scaling. And so it's like, here it is in the browser. And it was like, it was showing you a picture of what it was like in the browser. But then when it's expanded to full screen, they're just horribly confused. Well, like I used to just send like images to clients through email. And then they'd be like, I don't, like they would just think of it as an image, but when you put it in a browser like that, they suddenly kind of click about how it's supposed to work a little bit better. So I'll miss it, but I'll have to find an alternative. Sad for me, maybe not for most of our audience. And a little bit of good news to end the episode. This is not surprising, but it's nice to see that it's just continuing to gain momentum. U.S. pay TV subscriber base eroding at a record pace. Basically, people are stopping paying for cable TV. Mm. Anything satellite. they can cut. Satellite. Yeah. They count satellite here. Pretty much It's anything. expensive. And we learned last week that the streaming services are also feeling the pinch. So, good on you. Do you know how much media you can download from the Internet Archive? It's amazing. You can get almost the entire Green Acres series. And storage is cheap. It's weird. 20, actually, uh, here's your PSA. Storage has been going up in price since October, and it's probably going to go up dramatically for 2023. So, like, 2024. Right, or 2024. Your 20 terabyte hard drive is on the order of like 200 and some dollars. And it's like, oh, that doesn't seem like a really amazing deal. It's 20 terabytes. It doesn't seem like a really amazing deal when you can get a four terabyte SSD for like 200 and some dollars. Well, I've got some news for you. That's going to be a lot more expensive in the near future. Both of those. The hard drive price will go up because the flash price is going to go way up. Go and hoard DVDs from pawn shops and buy a giant hard drive and put these people out of business. I really want to share the picture of the milk crate full of DVDs and just the sheer glee of like, look what I got from the flea market. And it's just like, it's just so funny. <laughs> and they really do just sell them by almost by weight yeah yeah you know, like, they're trying to get rid of it. i don't care what's in this it's 20 dollars. take the whole thing off <laughs> like, i had some trouble reading that one i used the toothpaste and it read fine into the computer now i can watch <laughs> the special edition groundhog day i have an ancient uh twister dvd that i got <laughs> at a flea market like that but it's starting to show its age a little bit i need to to preserve it you gotta format shift it yeah I may have I may have started something bad because now the question is like, how can I get how can I share my collection with other people over the internet securely? And it's like, well, your internet connection is not good enough for that. Yeah. Linode <laughs> might be a little expensive to constantly stream video, but if you got deep pockets, you could be super popular among your friends. 
I think I still think the easiest thing is just a 20 terabyte external hard drive, but even that's a little too expensive. Yeah. You can have a uh, like a hard drive swap. Back in the day, BBSs were not. You couldn't do this on BBSs, so people would literally have like hard drive swaps. Where it's like, here's all of my stuff on my hard drive, you give me all the stuff on your hard drive, and we'll exchange every so often. It's but coming back. <laughs> my age group was CDs. You'd burn CDs for each other. Yeah, that's true. That was nice. All right. That that's sounds fine. cultural. That's not allowed. In 